have later been recognized by the Christian Church. Saint Rita is a woman of amazing strength and perseverance, whose actions and story have long since inspired other equally troubled women and misfits. Saint Rita of Cassia, born Margarita Lotti in 1381, was a brave Italian Augustinian nun and widow, venerated as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. Rita's parents were known to be noble, charitable people, but despite her pleas to join the sisters, she was married to a nobleman at the age of 12 as a child bride. Her husband, Paolo Mancini, was known to be very rich, but also a quick-tempered, immoral man with multiple feuds around the region of Cassia. Soon after marriage, she became pregnant at the age of 12. Whilst enduring her now husband's insults, physical abuse and infidelities, which would last for many years henceforth. According to popular tales, and during the 18 years they were married, through humility, kindness, and a fairly huge amount of patience, Rita was able to slowly help her husband Paolo become a better person, and perhaps through her devotedness to the Christian faith, he finally relented a famous feud known only at the time as La Vendetta. The revenge. Rita eventually bore two sons, bringing them up in the Christian faith she loved and admired. Paolo tried to remain congenial regarding his family feuds, but he was later betrayed by his allies and stabbed to death by a member of the feuding family. Humble as always, Rita gave a public pardon to her husband's murderers at his funeral. However, Paolo's brother, Bernardo, was akin to seek revenge through his and Rita's sons, hoping to convince them to seek revenge on their father's name. Bernardo was later able to convince Rita to allow her sons to live in the ancestral Mancini home and be under his tutorship. As they grew, her son's characters began to change under their uncle's influence and gaze. As they now seek revenge, despite of their mother's warnings and pleas for peace and congeniality, unable to persuade them from retaliating, she prayed to God he would take them as innocents before they had to face the consequences of murder and mayhem in the afterlife. Both boys died a year later, which pious Catholics believe was God's way to answer her prayers and relieve them from sin. After the death of her husband and two sons, Rita asked to enter the monastery of St. Mary Magdalene in Cassia, but was turned away by the nuns out of fear for her reputation and violent death of her husband. She persisted, however, and was given a task before she could join. In recognition of her pious nature and humility, she would have to reconcile her family with her late husband's murderers. Saint Rita prayed to her three pagan saints to help her and assist her as she readily set about the task of establishing peace between the hostile parties within Cassie. Popular religious tales of the time recall how the bubonic plague, or how it is best known, the Black Death, began ravishing Italy at the time, including Cassia. Bernardo, Paolo's brother, had fallen ill, and faced with death, decided to relinquish upon his feud, and therefore granting Rita her peace. At the age of 36, she was finally allowed to join the monastery. It's hard to picture Rita's life thus far as anything but a arduous journey. But whilst our life as a mother and wife had ended, the path of sainthood had just begun. Rita's acta, or life story, was compiled by an Augustinian priest named Jacob, of which the following remains. When Rita was nearing 60, as she meditated upon an image of Jesus Christ crucified, suddenly a small wound appeared on her forehead, as though a thorn from Christ's own crown had loosened itself and penetrated her delicate flesh. This was considered to be a partial stigmata, and she bore it until the end of her life in 1457. 
Tales are told of how, near the end of her life, and bedridden at the convent, she asked her cousin, who was visiting, a single rose. She did not expect to find one as they were out of season, but once nearing the garden, she found upon it a single blooming rose. Several religious symbols are related or associated to Rita. However, as she is commonly depicted, is holding a thorn, a symbol of her penance and stigmata, arms or hands, holding a large crucifix, a palm leaf with three crowns, her late family, flanked by two small children, her sons, a gospel book, a skull for mortality, and sometimes a flagella whip, associated with mortification of the flesh. Rita was canonized on May 24, 1900 by Pope Leo XIII. Her feast day is May 22, when her saintly reputation for impossible causes, the abused, loneliness, and many other traits to both women in special, and also the misfits, and the lost, some who society seems to forget, overlook, or surrender to their own illnesses and problems. Her body, who has remained corrupt over the centuries, is venerated today in a shrine at Cassia, which bears her name. A spectacular phenomenon was noticed by the other nuns in the convent. Each time, her stigmata appeared untouched by death. As the story goes, at the time of her death, the sisters of the convent bathed and dressed her body for burial, but soon they noticed a wound on her forehead remained the same, droplets of blood reflecting light around the wound. Later, when her body was exhumed, the stigmata on her forehead still looked the same, and the body showed little signs of deterioration. Two more times after she was exhumed, and each time she looked the same. She was declared incorruptible after the third exhumation, and as is the custom in the Catholic Church, relics were removed in preparation for sainthood. Saint Rita is arguably one of the bravest women of the 14th and 15th century, as her tolerance and humility when faced with seemingly impossible tasks is, in the least, both commendable and extremely encouraging to both women and men alike. <laughs>